I love working on computers, especially old computers, loud computers, dusty computers, and really just any computer that people have given up on. Because while they're not new and exciting and can sometimes be a challenge to work with, finding creative ways to put these computers to use can be a ton of fun. This here is the Compaq 5720F that I actually got from the trash. Although the video's thumbnail might imply otherwise, I fortunately didn't need to go dumpster diving to make this video. Long story short, the organization that I work for purchased some property, and when cleaning out a lot of the inventory, this PC landed in a pile of junk that was headed out to the dumpster. Actually, all four of these were in that trash heap, so I asked if I could take them home with the intention of finding new homes for them, or at least to recycle them properly. These first two are nearly identical compact desktops that we're featuring in this video, so I'll come back to the specs on those. This third case here is currently just a case. It originally had a custom PC build inside with an AMD FX6100 CPU and some old Radeon GPU, but I've actually rebuilt that system in a better case and I'll be giving it to an individual that couldn't quite afford to buy their own PC for getting into some content creation. This last system was another AMD pre-built, but I believe the motherboard is dead after some testing and the CPU was physically damaged. I pulled the RAM and a couple of other components for parts and I'll drop it off at a local recycling center. For this video, we're just looking at these compact desktops and specifically just one of them because they are essentially identical. Also, I got these computers before realizing I wanted to film any of this or start a YouTube channel and so they're already cleaned up and pretty much ready to go. The CQ5720F is a desktop released by Compaq in late 2010. It features the dual-core AMD Athlon 2 X2 245 processor clocked at 2.9GHz and includes integrated ATI Radeon 3000 graphics. Originally, these came with 3GB of DDR3 RAM, but using some of the RAM I pulled from the computer with the dead motherboard, I was actually able to make sure both of these had two sticks of 4GB for a total of 8GB each. These come with an optical drive as well as a 640 gigabyte hard drive. But for today's video, we're gonna go ahead and swap that out for a 128 gig SSD. Unfortunately, this unit doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi, but it does have these two PCI by one slots that we might be able to use for something. My hope was that this computer could work pretty well for basic computing and web browsing, but my biggest concern was the dual core Athlon 2. My fears were realized when I installed Windows and began using this PC for an hour or so. The two cores of the CPU were almost always pegged at 100% when doing pretty much anything. Web pages struggled to load and YouTube playback was atrocious. I even tried installing Ubuntu to see if a slightly lighter weight operating system might breathe some life into this nearly 13 year old desktop, but the resulting experience wasn't much more improved. It was at this point that I decided to see what upgrade options were available. I actually want to take a moment to shout out HP. I don't usually have much good to say about OEMs, but after working on a few of these machines, I've come to realize that their support documentation is incredibly easy to find, navigate, and understand, so good on you, HP. Using their support page, I was able to find info on the exact motherboard and find a list of all available processor upgrades. While I could technically go up to a six-core Phenom, I eventually decided to order these. These are Athlon 2 X4 640s. The X4640 is a quad-core clocked at 3 GHz, and I picked two of these up for about $12 each on eBay. My hope is that with a very small investment, we can add 100 MHz and two cores and hopefully make these machines much more Windows 10 friendly. Right off the bat though, I ran into a problem. The pins. It might be hard to see on camera, but a few of these pins on this pin grid array style chip were slightly bent. The damage wasn't incredibly severe, but I knew from experience that most likely these wouldn't fit properly into the AM3 socket. So armed with a gift card, some tweezers, and lots of patience, I eventually got these pins straightened out to a point where I was pretty content with them. To get the 640 installed, I removed the CPU cooler by flipping the single clip on the side of the heatsink to release it from the retention bracket. Then after wiggling the cooler to try to break up the thermal paste a little bit, I pulled the heatsink off. Using some handy dandy isopropyl alcohol, I removed the thermal paste from the old CPU as well as the heatsink. Then I undid the lever on the socket and pulled the old CPU out. Putting in the new Athlon should have been pretty easy, but amateur CPU pin bending skills meant that the pins didn't quite want to line up with the socket. Fortunately, after some light wiggling, it dropped into place. Now all that was left was to put thermal paste on the CPU, replace the heatsink, and then make sure that the fan was plugged into the header on the motherboard. 
Now it's time to boot back into Windows and see if this whole upgrade was worth it. It was. Almost immediately, I noticed that Windows was running much more smoothly. It seemed like Windows was putting the extra two cores to good use. Opening apps and navigating File Explorer was pretty snappy, and web browsing was really smooth and I actually worked for about an hour or so on this computer just to make sure I had a good feel for how well it performed, and I really forgot I was testing it after a while. That is, until I tried YouTube playback, which was still pretty atrocious. Tons of frames were being dropped, and the CPU was basically pegged at 100% any time I tried to watch something. My guess is that this is due to not having any sort of modern, integrated graphics on this chip. I'd be curious what YouTube playback might be like if we could get a somewhat modern graphics card in this PC, but with the buy one PCIe slot, it might be a little bit tricky. I might try to look at that in a future video, but who knows. I ran PC Mark 10 with both the dual core and quad core Athlons, and these are the scores. In the Essentials category, the X2245 scored a 2,834. The X4640 scored a 4,006. In the Productivity category, the X2245 scored a 2,911, and the X4640 scored a 2,897? Clearly something's off here. It might be something weird with my testing methodology or with PC Mark 10, but I went back and double checked these results and got very similar numbers. So we'll just ignore this benchmark and you can take my word that the X4 is definitely better for productivity. Cinebench R15 scales really well with this upgrade. As you can see, the X2245 averaged a 136 and the X4640 averaged almost double that at 264. Under full load, the X2245 drew about 79 watts from the wall, while the X4640 drew 114 watts, so those two cores definitely need a lot more power. However, when idle, the X2245 and the X4640 were nearly identical, drawing 42 watts and 41 watts respectively. Unfortunately, I don't really trust much of the temperature sensor data I was getting because it was pretty all over the place and had a lot of weird anomalies, so I don't really feel comfortable posting anything on here, but based off of what I could see, it didn't seem like the X4640 was running that much hotter than the 245. We'll just keep our fingers crossed and hope nothing catches on fire. I had no interest in trying to do any gaming with this machine, partly because that's not what I plan on doing with this channel, but also because the onboard graphics are pretty old and I highly doubt they could run anything. Like I said before, I could try to find a graphics card that works in this, but I'm not really sure how effective that would be. Instead, I tried to do some remote streaming for my gaming PC using Steam, but I think the lack of modern video encoder support seems to be an issue. I went ahead and fired up Doom and began streaming to the Compaq, but the latency made this title essentially unplayable. Due to some limitations of my capture card, the frame rate was actually probably better than what you see on this video, but not by much. While streaming was somewhat of a disappointment, I was actually thoroughly surprised when, on a whim, I installed Studio One to try out some music production. I used Studio One on a pretty regular basis and was pretty shocked when this ran two of the demo sessions really well. I was using the Persona's 24C audio interface running at a 512 sample buffer, and I don't think I had a single dropout at all, even running multiple tracks with plugins, reverb, all sorts of stuff, it handled it really well. Now I doubt anyone's going to buy or build a computer like this as a dedicated music production machine, but it's really cool to know that whoever may have this computer in the future might be able to do some creative stuff with it. By today's standards, this upgraded compact desktop isn't exciting or special, but for a computer that was literally on its way to a landfill, plus $11, I think it's quite impressive. I already have a plan to donate one of these to someone in need of a computer to be able to do some web browsing and things like that, and I hope to do the same with the other at some point, but I might hang on to it for a little bit longer to test out maybe a 6-core Phenom upgrade, or a GPU upgrade, or maybe even try to use it as a home server. Not sure how well that last one's going to work with the power draw, but we'll see. If you have any other thoughts or ideas, leave a comment below, and if you like these kind of videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel. But for now, Hope you have a great day, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.